you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry. As I was saying, why are they here? Why are they always here? I just can't catch a break. It's like I wake up and they're there. I walk around and they're there. I go to my special room and they're there. Oh, it was bad enough already having them constantly pine for my affection, but now it's even worse than anything I've ever experienced. The ironic thing is, as she's yelling at me and berating me for being a risk to society, she's a risk to herself. I couldn't help thinking of that moment in Mean Girls where the canteen becomes the jungle. Well, that's the supermarket constantly, and the woman before me is an aged Regina George. Like, at least they do take care of me and love me, and I suppose they do enjoy cleaning up after my... You know, but I simply cannot breathe with them around. I stand there listening to her tirade of abuse. I don't move. I just stare at her. I felt unbelievably tempted to cough on her, to spray her with my non-existent germs. <laughs> walks away and continues her day. Hey, Janice. Yeah. Just tell him we'll have to let him go. Tell him I said good luck. Yeah, well, I'll talk to you later. We're all in this together, right? That's the ninth worker I've had to let go. It feels awful, but it's too, too expensive to hold on to them. Especially when no one's buying anything. I feel the stairs of the onlookers. And now I start to feel that icky, prickly feeling of tears. And I haven't cried yet. I haven't cried once since the world turned upside down. And I promise you, I won't cry in front of this woman. I won't give her the satisfaction. It breaks my heart, but I have to do this to them. I can tell that all of this has been worrying them, but I know my kids, and I know they'd never want me to know I'm worrying. I love them so much. I forget I'm speaking. They sit and absorb all the information. They now know all the intimate details of the will, and honestly, I never expected them to know this early. I wish they didn't, but we have to be prepared. Because nobody can go out because of this coronavirus. Oh. Or as I like to call it, the corporate financial virus. <laughs> or I'm going broke virus. Oh, damn. I wish I went into the toilet paper industry. She sees my eyes well and still she yells, You stupid girl! I'm not a stupid girl! I'm just someone who has no choice but to be here. I need the money and I'm making the best of the situation. And I am doing my best. Do you see this? This thin layer of fabric is the only barrier between me and the virus. <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but how is that supposed to keep me safe? <coughs> like, do they really think that the surgical mask will suffice? <coughs> I'm out here risking my life every day to help contain this virus, and all the government provides me with is this stupid thing. Oh my god. I swear, if I'm gonna get one more complaint from Clyde saying they can't book an appointment due to new laws, who does it think they are? I don't make the laws, and I'm sorry that I can do no one's hair in under 30 minutes. Like, look, I know you have to go back to your McMansions and box dye your hair yourself for a little while. I know it must be hard on you, but I don't care to hear about it. What is up, guys? Carl checking in. Currently, for all of us, life is really hard. I'm going through a lot right now. I find it hard to keep myself entertained now that I'm what of playing tennis out the back or going for a swim downstairs. I have all these new things now. It's so exciting. I have this super soft grey blanket that I get to put on the end of my bed. And all my new things have a home. Jackets on the hangers, kettle that makes a super funky sound when the water gets all hot on the bench. But my favourite thing out of all my new things is this. My key. I've been sitting on the couch between class and online school. As I sit there flicking through channels, I notice a worried Gladys Berejiklian. I hadn't watched the news for about a week. Compassion fatigue, they call it. As I sit there listening to her read out the numbers, I think, what makes these people real anyway? Are they just statistics being read off by a politician, worried how this will affect them at the next election? They have to live with their grandparents. It's fine. They love their grandparents. They love their home. They would miss their friends. I'd be ripping them away from everything they've known their whole lives, uprooting them. Oh, nothing. It's the only time I can get some peace and quiet when they have gone on their hourly walk and I have the house all to myself. But then, just as I've hit my sweet spot, my personal nirvana, I get picked up, plucked, snatched, taken, stolen away from my heaven so that they can prop me up how they prefer, and I get washed, washed, washed for crying out loud. And no, not even the proper way. No, they do it with their gloves and their soap and their stupid rubber ducks. Ah, oh, it's humiliating. It's traumatic. I mean, I'm never going to recover from this. Oh, and I try telling them no, fighting as hard as I can, pushing them away, but they just 
Don't. Listen. <coughs> that is, and if she tries to play words, I interrupt her again. <coughs> and please yeah. remember that I have family too, and I have people that I would protect. And I'm in contact with people every single day. I have also lost people to COVID. I'm crying now in a public situation, but I'm not crying for a stupid woman who can't treat people with respect. I'm crying because last week my granddad died in a nursing home alone, and I couldn't say goodbye. Now, I've seen newborn babies die without a single glimpse of the world we live in because of this virus. I've seen elderly die alone without a single loved one around them because of this virus. I mean, I can't even hug my own children. They'd be dropped into a new place with new people. Sure, they'd adapt to it, but what if they hate me for it? I wouldn't be around, but I don't want them to hate me, take my memory. I don't even want to be a memory. I guess the one good thing about work slowing down was I planned a trip to Hamilton Island with the family. <laughs> Paragliding, jet skiing, get a nice suntan in. And then we got put into lockdown. It's been super stressful, and I mean, I've... Sorry, I've got to take this call. Hi, Janice. How did he take it? What is up, guys? Carl checking in again. <sighs> Look, I'm sure you'll feel awful being cooped up in our little prisons where there's just nothing to do at all, but we're all in this together. <laughs> I'm trapped! I'm stuck! I cannot tell you how much this quarantine thing has ruined my life. I used to have a happy life. I'd wake up in my happy home, go to my happy work as a happy teacher, have a happy, deppy day, and get on with my life. Before this whole pandemic thing happened, I was content. As soon as I walked out of those school gates, I'd be free from the devils incarnate! I didn't plan for this! No one plans for this! Now every five minutes I get emails about Zoom meetings, waiting rooms, how they can't find the link, but clearly it's right there in front of them! My own house is a chaotic work environment! My older brother back in Vietnam has liver cancer. I have to look after him and his family. I have to leave my own family. I'm being forced to choose. They've been working from home the last few days, and every so often they'll let me join in on the video calls, and all the others cheer when they see me. Oh, that's so nice. We stare out the window together, and she helps me stop the cars. It was magical. You know, I have always been so judgy of those mothers that post things like, when is it wine o'clock? Wine Facebook mums have always been my least favourite brand of suburban mother, but consider this my formal apology to them. I finally have a home. And I don't have to pack it up tomorrow. It's a weird feeling, really, a mix of joy and confusion. Thank God for this bloody pandemic or I'd still be sleeping with my head up against that bench under the Empire overpass. The worst thing is when I get emails from my students saying, Miss Smith, it's been so hard transferring to online schooling and I'm struggling with the workload. Please help. Ah, uh, internet. Broken. Cutting out. Oh, dumb teacher. I swear, if this coronavirus doesn't kill her, I will. Bring it on! Normally, I am the put-together sexy mum that takes hot Pilates in the morning while still managing to get her kids to school on time. I am the mum that shows up to school in a crisp cream suit and calmly delivers three coordinating backpacks filled with healthy lunches. And lastly, I am the mother who patiently wipes a tear from her darling daughter's eye and explains for the 50th time that when mummy was in school, maths was very different. The small neighbour staying home from school today, but instead of coming over to play, they're sticking notes up on the window. Now I'm not the strongest reader, but it seems like they miss me. Well, I was that mum. But now, oh god, now everything is different. Homeschooling has ruined me. Trying to teach maths has ruined me. Miss, my mum's not coping and I don't know what to do. Ah, it's exhausting! I don't care! At lunchtime, we have a lunchtime I made to schedule. I turn on the TV for the kids, lock myself in the bathroom, and cry. You know, I can't wait for the next parent teacher interview and all the wine and chocolate I'm gonna get when they finally understand. Their kid's not the little angel they think they are. I don't wanna go on another walk. We go on the same walk every day. Can't we just stay home today? Just us? Okay, look, they are my kids. It's not that I'm not aware of their flaws and shortcomings, it's just. I thought once I made it to this point in my life, I would have a little more me time. Just some time. For me. I need to pee, and I want a donut, and I want the house to be empty. <coughs> Up the rust! I can't do this anymore! I can't manage my own kids, and turns out I can't do maths! My eight-year-old is smarter than me! I have issues too, and quite frankly, a lot more serious than your hair. 
But as soon as I start to go on about them, you ladies just shut up and start going on about how your daughter's gaining weight or how your husband won't get off his lousy ass. I flipped the channel again. It's a nine news special on the coronavirus. They have some guy complaining that the deaths caused by lifting the lockdown might be remotely comparable to the economic benefits of doing so. You ladies never stop and ask me about what I'm going through. Like 10 bucks you don't know my shop's closing down. Because I can't afford rent no more. Even though I built this joint from the ground up, it's just going to take it away from me like that. All because of the stupid Rona. What is up guys? Car checking in once again. I'm really struggling with all this. I mean, how does the government expect me to stay home? Look, I've tried to live with my mate Sam on his yacht, but it just feels claustrophobic. I could just buy my own. Yeah, I think I'll do that. And you guys can do the same thing because I know, it's hard to deliver cabin fever. And then I got angry. I mean really angry between selfish politicians and celebrities and opportunistic companies. And then I decided the word of precedent is banned and strange time is banned ah, and we're on this together. Absolutely banned and anything else people keep repeating in the media sound relatable or smart. My girls, all my beautiful apprentice babies out of their trade. Weirdly, it's been harder to sleep without the screeching noise and vibrations of the motors rushing past me. So instead, I just look up at my roof. It's still so weird to say that. Roof. My roof. My family is waiting for me to come back. If I can't come back, would I carry this virus? If I don't come back, they will struggle. I don't know what to do. Anyways, as I'm looking up at my roof, I begin to wonder where I would be if they didn't come take us off the streets. I hope they still invite me to their weddings. If they're all still on. How I would be. If I would even be. But now they've started leaving the house again. No one's around to say, Oh, big stretch every time I do a big stretch. No one makes me pancakes in the morning. No one gives me forehead kisses before bed. It breaks my heart when I see their little faces through the window. All I want to do is hug them and tell them that everything will be okay and mum will be home soon. But I can't. All because some selfish bastards won't stay home when they're sick or wear a mask. I thought I was being a good girl. I tried to be a good girl. Sure, I mess up sometimes, but I try so hard. And I can't help but wonder. Did I do something wrong to make them leave? Is this karma? Do I deserve this? And if I do, karma just took me by the head and slammed it into the ground. It grabbed onto my shoulders and knees me to the cry. It went and slapped me across the face. I'm helpless. Because apparently wearing a mask makes it uncomfortable to breathe? Well, I have one thing to say. Suck it up, princess, because once we run out of nurses, we'll have to use vets. Have you seen how they take temperatures? Think about it. Yeah, just stay home. So, the next time they decide to hold me, they should never be allowed to let go. Because the best thing we did this whole time was make time to be together and love each other. And I don't want that to stop. And as the world tries to figure everything out. I'll be holding doors for strangers. Letting people cut in front of me. Saying good morning. Keeping babies giggling in grocery lines. Stopping to say hi to someone who seems lonely. Thanking medical workers. Sharing food. Giving children a thumbs up. Being patient at the counter. Smiling at passers-by. Shouting a stranger a coffee. Why? Because I will not live in a world where love is replaced by fear. So let's start by spreading kindness. Understanding. And judging less. Being forgiving to strangers. Giving good grace to those who've had a bad day. Be forgiving with yourself. And if you can't find kindness, be, be kindness. kindness. Social distancing!